Hi, I'm Ryan from Buster Beagle 3 d Now that there's a lot more of you out there making this machine, I thought it was a good time to maybe go over some issues that you might uh, encounter while putting this together, as well as some minor tweaks and upgrades that I've done to this machine since I did my last video. So let's get started. first thing I did was install two more springs that went from the pull down arm to the frame. Now when you pull this pin out, the spring inside of there is really not strong enough to keep the weight of the entire top assembly and the lever from falling down. But with these added springs, it just makes sure that it won't fall down on your head, which I learned the hard way. I just drilled a hole through the lever itself and then had a T-nut where I bolted the two springs to it. It's a pretty simple thing to do and it just gives an extra layer of security to make sure that it doesn't come crashing down on you. So the next change is to the PID case itself. In the original version, you weren't able to actually add a fin to the solid state relay. The issue there is that if the solid state relay fails, it'll fail in the on position. And what that means is it won't turn off the power to the band. So some of the heating that you are getting or the overheating to the bands might have to do with the fact that the solid state relay is not turning off. So this new design, it'll allow you to add the fin that attaches to the bottom of the solid state relay and, uh, and it'll still uh, allow clearance with the machine. Now, the only thing that you have to kind of worry about is if you pull down, you see the bolt that goes through that's holding on the top part, the top bracket. You either need to cut that off so that it's flush and doesn't interfere with the fin, or you just need to have a smaller bolt that doesn't protrude out and won't, and won't uh, affect the positioning of that fin. So here's the new case. As you can see, it has an opening in the top for the fin to fit out uh, when it's attached to the solid state relay. So you're gonna take your solid state relay and then you're gonna take some thermal paste, this, the same kind of thing that you use on CPUs and computers. And you wanna, you wanna put a thin coating on the entire side of the metal side of your uh, solid state relay. I'm not gonna do it to this one just because I'm not, uh, I'm not doing this right now, but you, you wanna put a thin coating and then you're gonna take your fin and you're going to attach your fin to the underside with the thermal paste on it. And then you're gonna screw those two together. So I'll do that now. Okay, so then once that is attached, what you're gonna do is when you're putting it together, it's gonna slide in the same way that the old one was, but it's gonna tuck under these new tabs right here. And then when you put on the back, the back also has those tabs on it, and it's just gonna fit right over, and it's gonna keep that in place so that it can't fall out. And I'll put a link to this new case in the description. So some of the issues that a lot of people have have to do with the actual PID controller and the settings of the PID controller. So I'm gonna show you the settings that I have on my particular one, but if you have the manual that came with your PID controller, definitely take that uh, and, and reference that for what each of the values does. A lot of this information I got from another video that I had linked to in previous videos of how someone else set their PID controller but I'll show you the settings that I'm using for mine. So I'll turn it on. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold down the set button. Okay, so alarm one, I set to 10, hit set. ARU, ARU is a self-tuning, so I'm actually gonna set that to one, which is, a, which is somewhat of a, a learning uh, setting so that it actually starts to, uh, to auto-tune. So once you've set everything, just let it sit. And I think after 20 or 30 seconds, it'll go back to the original screen 
and those settings that you had just put in there will, will be locked in. Okay, now that that first menu is all set, the next thing that I want to do is set the maximum temperature for the bands of this machine. Now a lot of the issues that I think some people are running into is the settings that come factory on this machine have the temperature on the bands much too high. So the way to get to that is I'm going to hold down set and the left arrow at the same time. You're going to see code and 000. zero, zero. So I want to change 000, zero, zero to 001. Zero, zero, now, if you have four numbers here, you would just set it to 0001. It'll do the same thing. And I'm going to hit set. So right here, this Y actually stands for K, and it is the K sensor. So that is OK. So I'm going to hit set again. And uh, the SSL is saying the lowest value that your machine can actually register. So this is the one you really want to pay attention to. This is the SLH, and, and it is the highest temperature that your heater bands can handle. So right here, I have this set to 300 degrees Celsius because that is what my bands are rated at. So once this is done, this is really the only ones that you have to worry about. So after you set this to 300, just let it sit here for 20 to 30 seconds and then it will recycle to the original screen. Now, if you've gone in here and you've made lots of changes to things already and you don't know how to get it back to the way that it was or you wanted to set it back to the factory setting, what you would do is hit set and the left button and you would change this code to nine one, one, and then hit set. And what that is gonna do is actually reset your PID controller to its factory settings. Now, another quick tip that has to do with this, if you turn on your machine and you see that this number is actually a negative number, what that means is that you have your temperature sensor wires backwards. So, if, if you can see, we have this red and this blue wire. Now, I know a lot of people say that the red wire is actually the negative and the blue is the positive, but in, in all of the versions that I've seen, you have to actually connect the red to the positive for this to work correctly. So the red was on the bottom, the blue is on the top. But if you plug in your machine and this number is negative and keeps going negative as everything gets hotter, then that means that you need to swap around those wires. So the last thing I wanted to go over was depending on the PID controller that you purchase, there might be a slight discrepancy in the terminals of the PID controller between the different brands. So the one on the top here, as you can see, four and five are different polarities than the PID controller on the bottom here. So on the top, four is positive, and on the bottom, four is negative. So if you run into any issues and you have a PID controller similar to the bottom one, then you just have to swap those in the diagram that I had sent out. So in the video, the version on the top is the one that I use. So if you have the version on the bottom, you just have to swap those two wires. So that's it for now. I wanted to thank everyone who's already started putting these machines together. I really do appreciate it. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos coming up soon. And we will see you next time.